What's going on everybody and welcome back to Johnny K Picks and in this video I'll be going over my full card picks and predictions along with the bets that I'm looking at so far for UFC Vegas 96 and that is Cannoneer versus Baralho. Now first things first please hit the like button for me subscribe if you're new or if you just haven't yet turn on those notifications so you know when I put out my videos when we go live on Wednesday nights maybe something on Saturdays who knows. Uh, leave some comments below how well you did at 305. Um, any bets that you're looking forward to, any fights you're looking forward to for this card. Um, and also check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash Johnny K picks. I put out my early picks, my early bets for every card, my betting cheat sheets, my time prop parlay cheat sheets. Um, footy is starting back up. It started this weekend. So I'm going to have more soccer bets if you're into soccer bets. So uh, I do all other bets as well, too. But mainly I my focus is obviously going to be UFC, but um, I do like betting soccer. So check it out. Five ninety nine a month to become a core member. But yesterday, last night, um, I wasn't able to watch the fights yet again. I uh, was out and about. So I'm not going to go over any of the fights because I didn't watch the majority of them. And yeah, I noticed um, a lot of fun stuff happened, I guess. I saw a lot of stuff on Twitter and we'll go over my bets real quick and then we'll just go right into this. 10 fight card i guess there's gonna be the ultimate fighter fights on here too i think there's only one that's scheduled but maybe there's one more coming i don't know but if there are any fights that are added um after i put out my video i will just put who i pick in the uh comments below like i usually do so just wanted to get this video out though but let's see let's jump to my bets real quick for last night uh, if I can ever get to it, there we go. Here were my bets. Um, some were good, uh, some were terrible, and some were just you know bad luck. Uh, a bad bet was betting Izzy. I um, went with my gut. Um, I just got to stop doubting Drickus, I guess, because doesn't matter how he looks, he gets this one done. Um, I did see uh, the final round and how it fit, how it lay, uh, played out. So uh, yeah, Drickus Drickus is good. So I'm just gonna stop doubting him. I, I guess that's what it is. Uh, the Gamrot, I did pick Gamrot, money line. Um, he lost by split decision, so it happens there. Uh, one, my two most confident bets, and I bet 2.5 and two units on, so that was good. Um, Kulabao, again, lost by split decision, so I had two losses by split decision, so that I, I wish we, I could have hit one of those, but it is what it is. And then I did not see Ursig getting knocked out by Kai Carl France. I will say that. Um, good win from Kai. But uh, that looked like a pretty decent bet early on, but now it looked like a bad one. So, like I said, little mixed bag here. I only ended up losing 1.18 units, so not the end of the world. I really wanted to, you know, start a new streak, but it is what it is for that. But let me see. We did hit our safe, we, not safety parlay. We hit our easy money parlay. Me and Blood Money. It was. Um, song money line and it was the under two and a half rounds in the jenkins fight so that hit so if you tailed that you got a pretty good chunk there and we'll start that up again on wednesday nights we always do that so we already got one down and we're gonna look for two this week so let's get like i said it's gonna be a quick breakdown of my results uh picks i also went six and six on my picks so not a great night either so um i know i saw a lot of people having a little rough night um i think the highest i've seen was like maybe eight or nine picks right out of the 12 so um yeah a lot of underdogs hit a lot of crazy outcomes like i said so that it's always fun for that for watching it so let's jump into it we got 10 fights like i said maybe one more is added the tough finale another one who knows but first one we're gonna go to is gonna be kong wang versus victoria leonardo um Kong Wang is making her UFC debut. Uh, I believe she was for, on the road to UFC. She, um, yeah, her last fight uh, two months ago. So she's making her UFC debut officially. But she's a very good kickboxer. She's got decent power in her hand. She's got good takedown defense. Um, trying to think of anything else. Like, I mean, she can um, wrestle and grapple. She does have decent submissions. I think she's got a submission on her record. Um, at one point, yeah, right here. But it was a while ago. But like I said, she's mainly going to be a kickboxer. Uh, very quick hands, good like good kicks, like at basically your normal kickboxer. But she's going to want to keep this fight on the feet. Victoria, though, okay striker, okay grappler, okay in the clinch. She's literally just okay at everything. Not 
um you know not very good at anything super good but she's not awful at anything either i guess if you want to say but she that's about it like that's her in a nutshell she's i mean she's pretty durable i know she got knocked out i believe in her last fight to natalia silva but natalia silva was lighting her up and um I could totally see that happening in this fight. So I got to go with Kong Wang here. I know the, the line is like minus 800, super insane, um, but I get it. But I'm not probably going to be touching this fight. Unfortunately, I can maybe see an under in this fight, but maybe weighing inside the distance could be something you can look at for this one. But other than that, there's really nothing to choose here. So give me Wang to win. I'm, I'll just go ahead and say she gets her out of there. Maybe second or third round knockout. Um, or finish if you want to say just to be a little safe maybe a club and sub so but yeah wang should win this one she's going to be the way better striker next one another women's fight it's going to be Josiane nunez versus uh jacqueline Cobacante. uh nunez good striker um throws one punch at a time more so than not not doesn't really throw a lot of combos but she's got a ton of power in her hands especially with her overhand rights um a lot of looping shots like i said but when like i said when they do connect she does have that knockout power where she can knock out any fighter um she is a little smaller for the division um this is gonna be a bantamweight fight so she is a little bit smaller for the bantamweight um but she does pack that power for the bantamweight um she her takedown defense isn't the greatest but she does have a decent ground game she can get back up stay safe all that good stuff i know in the last fight against chelsea chandler chelsea chandler was so much bigger than her she was just able to take her down and basically hold her down on the mat so um that's probably the reason why she lost if she if she could have kept that fight on the feet she probably would have beat her uh jacqueline though she's a very good striker she's got very quick hands good volume good kicks she likes to push forward um, not the, you know, not, she doesn't really have that crazy knockout power like Nunez has, um, pretty durable. And, um, she really hasn't fought the greatest competition. Um, even in the UFC, like her last fight was against Zara Farron. And I don't, I don't think she's all that great. I think that was just to oh, get, get her a win under her belt for your, her UFC debut. She did get it done. So good for her, but this is a, this is a bigger step up in competition. And I'm not saying Nunez is going to be a champion one day, but from Zara to Nunez, this is a big step up. Man, this I I do think this fight's gonna be close though. Um, but I'm gonna take a shot on Nunez. I like the power, like I said. I think she can land, I think she can crack Kobacante a couple times. Um, Kobacante is just gonna have to maybe mix in some wrestling and stay on the outside and hope to not get you know cracked with that overhand right. So, but I still think Nunez can get some damage done um i think she can get a finish so give me nunez to win i'm gonna say i'll go with it wouldn't shock me if it's gonna be a decision but let's go with decision but i wouldn't be shocked if she can get a knockout either so i think she has a couple paths to victory i think colva conte is just gonna have to out volume nunez stays safe for 15 minutes because i don't think colva conte is gonna get a finish either way either so gonna take a shot in the dog i think she's about minus 150 or i'm sorry plus 150 range um we'll see where that's going maybe look at the over depending on what it is if it's it's probably not going to be set at one and a half would be two but maybe that'll be a decent plus money play um but you'd be sweating it a little bit but give me give me nunez by decision i think it's going to go to decision for some reason going with the gut next one's going to be slava borishev versus james uh, i always pronounce this wrong i'm just going to say uh Yan, Lan, Yan top or something like that or Lan top however you want to say it uh, but Slava though we all know who he is <laughs> he's a very good kickboxer he's got very good combos uh, works the body well um, terrible takedown defense he does have a pretty decent submission defense game if you want to say except not in his last fight he got submitted by Chase Hooper um, but Chase Hooper is a beast on the map anyways um, but yeah that's that's Slava's game. He's very hittable. He got cracked by Chase Hooper on the feet, which that's not a good look. And yeah, that's what he is. He's a kickboxer. He wants to kickbox and he wants to strike. Uh, James, though, he's a well, well rounded guy. He's got good striking, good cardio. He's durable. Um, he can wrestle if need be, but he's not the great. He's not going to be like a Chase Hooper, you know, 
jujitsu or grappling or anything like that, but he can get the fight to the mat. I think pretty much anybody can take down Slava Claus to slow him down if need be. But James is more so a striker. He wants to keep it on the feet as well. Um, tough fight here. Um, it does scare me for my pick, picking Slava. I am going to pick him in this fight only if James had a little bit more grappling upside. I would probably pick him all day, and I know he's the underdog too. I'm not touching this fight whatsoever. Uh, I just don't trust Slava Claus. In the last fight, he got cracked by Chase Hooper on the feet, and his chin could be a little dusty, but I do think he's the better striker. Um, I do think he can outland James as well, maybe land the better shots, but James is very durable. Um, I don't think he's been finished. He's been submitted twice, but... You know, Slava's not going to submit James, or so I don't think he's going to get a knockout here. But it wouldn't shock me because you know Slava's got dangerous striking. So, gonna go with Slava to win. I'm gonna say by decision, but I'm just a little scared to bet Slava, and I think he's like a minus two hundred favorite. I don't want to touch that at all. But going with the better fighter, I think on paper, and I do think he might bounce back here. This is a good. This is a good um, bounce back fight for Slava Claus. Next one is gonna be Jose Medina versus Zach Reese. And Jose Medina, he's making his UFC debut. His last fight was on the Dana White Contender Series about 10 months ago. Um, but he has solid striking, he's pretty durable. Um, his takedown defense isn't all that great, but if he gets some takedowns of his own, he does have pretty good ground and pound. Um, he's a little hittable on the feet, um, he doesn't really have knockout power. But he can, like I said, if he gets you down on the map, he can rain down some good ground and pound and elbows and stuff like that. But uh, Zach Reese, well-rounded guy, uh, solid striking. He's got good power, as you saw in his last fight. He was able to knock out Julian Marquez in like 20 seconds. Um, and he was also um, knocked out himself very early in that fight against Cody Brundage. But that was a slam. But uh, that was a crazy night with two slam knockouts. But. Um, he's got good takedown defense. He's got good grappling, good submissions. Um, I believe all of his wins or the majority of them. Yeah, all of his wins have come by finish. And all of his wins are in the first round and he's lost in the first round. So we have not seen Zach Reese in the second round in his career. Not to say that he death gasses or anything like that, but he it is a mystery. We just don't know, but he's very dangerous in the first round as we've seen. But um, this is, I'm going to pick Zach Reese because I just think he's the more dangerous guy. But I, the longer the fight, this fight goes, I will be sweating that pick. Um, Zach Reese is like a minus 380 favorite. So that to me isn't great either because it's hard to trust either of these guys. But I do trust Zach Reese a little bit more. I don't think Jose Medina is all that great. You saw in his last fight in the Dana White Contender Series. Like, I think the fighter who was fighting him would just shoot and take downs after takedowns. And I think Zach Reese can do the, exactly the same thing. But is Zach Reese's cardio going to be able to hold up for three rounds? I can. I want to say Medina's can. But that's where you're betting. You're betting on Zach Reese. Can he get it done early? And do you think his cardio will hold up? If you say yes to both. Maybe you it won't be such a hard bet for you to do, but I'm not probably going to bet this fight. Maybe I'll look at the over-unders. It might be set at one and a half. Maybe over one and a half is a good look. But um, yeah, if Zachary so gets this fight to the mat, he can work that grappling very well. So we'll see what happens. But give me Zachary to win. I'll say a like first or second round finish, whether it's going to be a knockout or a submission. Um, Medina has never been knocked out. And he's been subbed once. So let's go with sub. First or second round submission. Next one's going to be a fun fight. We got Dennis Bazookia versus Danny Silva. Both these guys are dogs. And whenever both two dogs fight, they kind of have the same style, just a little bit different. It's gonna, It's always going to be a fun fight. But Bazookia, though, he's a well-rounded guy. Uh, solid everywhere. He's very tough. He always pushes forward. He can mix in some wrestling. Um, I wouldn't say he has KO power, but he breaks you down. He's a grinder. Uh, that, 
He's going to out cardio you. He's going to out tough you. Basically, more durability. Um, in his last fight against Connor Matthews, he looked very good. Um, but a little asterisk next to that Connor Matthews is not a lightweight, he was a featherweight moving up. So, Dennis had the big, um, big edge in size there in that fight and probably had a little bit more power. So not taking anything away from him, but he has Dennis has lost twice against very good guys. I will say not there. Nothing to say, you know, those are bad losses, but uh, Danny Silva though, very good boxing. He's durable. He's got good combos. He throws tons of volume. He's a little hittable too, but he's like I said, super durable. Um, always pushes forward. He works the body as well. Um, like I said, this is kind of like a, you know, mirror image fight. The only difference I would see is I think Danny Silva is a little bit more dangerous with his boxing, a little bit more power in his hands. And Dennis can mix in the wrestling a little bit easier than Danny can. Um, both have cardio, good cardio. Both are very durable. I'm going to go with Danny Silva just because I do like the power advantage. We've seen him have a good win against Josh Kulabau, which that's a good win. Um, Angel Pacheco fight was crazy good. So I'm going to roll with Danny here. Um, he's like a minus 250 favorite again. So it's like, I think this fight is closer than that, but I do favor Danny's hands. I do think he'll be able to maybe land some good shots on Dennis and eventually get him out of there. So, but it wouldn't shock me again if this goes a decision, but I'm going to go Danny Silva. Um, let's go with, let's go second or third round finish. These guys are going to be standing and banging for the most. I, I, I can look at the under in this fight. But um, I don't think Silva's been finished. He's never been finished. So he's been a decision a pretty good amount of times. So that's always good to see. Danny Silva's a pick, though. I'll just go with second or third round KO. Next one here. Ryan Loader versus Robert Valentin. So I believe this is a tough fight. Final? Finale? I don't watch tough anymore, but I believe it is. <laughs> if it's not, correct me in the comments. But I, I haven't watched the season or anything like that. I just watched the last couple of these guys' fights and stuff like that on there. So going with this. Ryan Loader, though. Where am I? At? He's making uh, obviously he's making his UFC debut, but this is a finale. He's a good wrestler. He's got good takedowns. He's got good top control if he gets the fight to the mat. His striking isn't all that great. Um, pretty durable. Good cardio, and that's what he is. He's a wrestler. He's going to try to get you down. He's going to out-wrestle you, out-grind you, and uh, get some ground and pound going, all that good stuff. Valentin's the opposite. He is a very good striker, uh, good power in his hands. Can be a little hittable at times on the feet, though. Can get in some brawls here and there, but he can wrestle as well if need be, but he's going to be the striker. His takedown defense, you know, it's not terrible, I wouldn't say it's amazing though, but so he can get taken down here. So that's a little bit worrisome. So yeah, it's just striker versus wrestler. I'm going with the striker. I think he's more dangerous. I think if loader wins, it's probably going to be by decision. I don't think he's going to be able to get out Robert, but Valentin, I believe has the chance to get him out of there with a, with a punch with, you know, on the feet, maybe land a good shot, maybe get, maybe drop him a couple times. It's, it's basically like, you know, Gamrot versus Hooker style fight right here. So going to go with Valentin. I think he gets this one done. I think it probably will go to decision, but uh, I think Valentin has the chance to, like I said, I think he has the opportunity to get the knockout here. So I'm going to go that route. I'm going to go. I'll say that I'll say knockout. No, I'm going to go decision. Valentin by decision. That's what I'm going to say. I think he might knock down, get a knockdown maybe early or second round but I don't think he'll be able to get Ryan out of there. Next one, main card. We got Michael Morales versus Neil Magny. Morales is super well-rounded. He's got very good wrestling, which we haven't really seen in the UFC, but he does have very good wrestling. Uh, good takedown defense. His striking is very good, very quick. He's very long for the division, but guess what? So is Neil Magny. Um, but yeah, we've seen him get cracked a couple times um, in a couple of his fights, but he's very durable. He's got good cardio. Sometimes he can be a little low volume as the fight goes on, but he's got very accurate striking and he's got knockout power. Magny, we all know who Neil Magny is. We've seen him for, I feel like we've seen him once, we see him once every four months, but he's well-rounded guy, okay striking. 
He's got pretty good grappling and submissions. He can be submitted. Uh, I think he's been submitted like six or six times, I want to say. Something crazy. So his submission, yeah, six times. He's been knocked out twice out of his 11. So eight out of his 11 times he's been finished. Um, if you go back and watch the Mike Malott fight, he was losing that fight until literally Mike Malott death gassed and with like 30 seconds left in the third round. And Neil Magny was able to get him out of there, which was crazy to me. Um, but it is what it is. Good win from him. But yeah, obviously, you know, Magny, has got cardio for three rounds, but I don't, you know, his durability is, is iffy, if you want to say, but yeah, got to go with Michael Morales here. I think he's the way better fighter, super young, uh, 12 years younger, the height and reach, you know, Neil will probably be a little bit taller, but the reach is about the same. So I just don't think Neil Magny's dangerous no- enough to put out Michael Morales or give him any worry. Um, I think Morales can get this one done by submission or knockout, but I'll go with knockout, but I can see a club and sub for sure. And uh, so probably Morales inside the distance is the play. Morales is like minus 500 or so. Totally get it, but it's hard to bet it. So you got to look for a different way. I think Morales inside the distance is a good look. Or if you want to be sneaky, maybe he does get this one done by decision. We've seen Morales go to decision a, a few times against some fighters and you're like how didn't he get him out of there like jake matthews uh max griffin is but they, these guys are pretty durable i will say but um yeah maybe he is knocking out the people that you should i lied maybe i lied there but yeah morales inside the distance that's what i'm gonna play here uh or pick and uh yeah i think he gets this one done next one's gonna be edmund shabazian versus jared Mearshart. interesting fight striker versus grappler um, but yeah, Shabazian is the striker. He's got very good striking. He's got big power in his hands. Thing about him though, his takedown defense isn't the greatest. And that worries me a little bit. He does have some wrestling he can use, but he probably isn't going to use it. I wouldn't if I was him. And, uh, he doesn't really have the greatest, uh, grappling defense when he does get taken down. He doesn't, it's hard for him to get back up. Uh, he's been submitted. I want to say a couple times at least no he has never been submitted he's been knocked out three times but we've seen him get controlled on the mat a couple times in some of his fights um he had a good fight against aj dobson but i'm surprised aj didn't even try to shoot a takedown there but hey it is what it is uh but Mearshart, like i said very good grappler um he's got very good submissions um his striking is pretty good it's looked looked a little it looks like it's improving actually in his last couple fights. Uh, I know he's fought Brian Barbarino, which isn't the greatest, but like he he looked pretty good in the striking department against Andre Petrovsky. Not to say that he's the greatest striker. Edmund's way better than that. Um, but yeah, I mean his chin can be a little dusty. He's been knocked out a few times, if you want to say four. He's been submitted eight. Um, if there's anything that's going to happen to him, he he could potentially get knocked out. So, um. Yeah, I, I mean, the line, I think, is another, it's a little wide again, but I'm going to go with Edmund. I like his power. I think he can get, um, I think he can get a GM3 out of there early. If not, if Gerald gets that wrestling and, and grappling going, I think he can get submitted too. So um, look at the under two and a half to see if it's set at two and a half or one and a half. But, um, because I do think both guys are a little chinny and they can get finished and they also can get a finish too. So the under would be is a very good look in this in this uh, fight. But for my pick, going to go Edmund to get the knockout. I'll go ahead and say first round knockout because the later the fight goes, Edmund does get a little um like his power kind of wanes. He doesn't he more most of his finishes are in like a first or second round. So first round knockout for Edmund is my pick. Let's go. Next one co-main is angela hill versus tabitha richie very interesting fight here but angela hill as we all know she's a very good striker she's got good kicks good combos throws tons of volume uh doesn't really have the power you know but she does have some wrestling and grappling in her back pocket she she's shown that off in her last few fights very good cardio for three rounds good volume for three rounds and she's very durable um, a lot of these 13 losses are have come by split this or split losses. So don't think 
you know, she's getting finished or something like that. I think she's only been finished like a couple times in her career. Yeah, she's uh, only been submitted twice in her career. She does go to decision a lot, but Tabitha Ritchie, though, very good grappler. Um, she really hasn't shown too much of her grappling. She's mainly show, like kept it on the feet and worked in some takedowns here and there. Um, but she does have good grappling, good submissions. Uh, her striking is good. She's very quick. She uh, jumps in and jumps right back out. Good uh, kicks, um, decent takedowns. Um, doesn't really have the power in her hands either. She is very durable. She can get cracked a couple times here and there, but, um, she's going to have the clear. Uh, well, I will say she's going to have the advantage. I wouldn't say clear Cl the advantage here on the map. Maybe Angela Hill with her volume striking has the advantage on the feet, but it's not like either fighter is going to be, you know, dead to rights either way. So close fight love the overs in this fight totally love the overs but i'm just gonna i'm gonna go with the younger fighter i'm gonna go with richie because i do think she's gonna have to mix in some takedowns if she doesn't she probably loses this fight you can also look at angela hill or whoever the underdog is i think it's close to a pick em, and maybe richie is the underdog so whoever whoever gets the plus three and a half um that will be a good bet either way i'll be looking at that the overs, like I said, I'll be looking at that. Maybe not pick a side because it's going to be a very close fight. But I'm going to pick Richie to win by decision. We'll see what happens. Wouldn't shock me at all if Angela Hill, being 39 years old, just defies age again and wins against someone very good. But we, now we got the main card. This is a very good fight. We got Jared Cannonier versus Kyle Baraljo. And Cannonier is a very powerful striker. He does have pretty good volume when he throws. He's got good, strong kicks. Takedown defense is pretty good. Um, as the fight goes on, he can slow down a little bit, as in, like, with his volume. He doesn't really, he doesn't death gas. Death gas. He, he's very durable. Um, in his last fight, I was there live at UFC Louisville. It was an early stoppage. I don't care what anyone says. But, um, you know, he did get cracked. I will say that, but I th he was still there. He was just trying to defend himself, and then Jason called it for whatever reason. But, um, yeah, very 40 years old now. We'll see what happens in this one. But Kyle, though, very well-rounded fighter, very good grappling, um, good submissions. You know, he's got good takedowns as well, good wrestling. I like his striking. I think it's – I don't want to say it's underrated, but a lot of people don't think he has. I think he's got solid striking, good technical – striking you know he does the thing the knock on kayo is he's not a finisher like he always goes to the decision but he did get that knockout against paul craig but it's paul craig but um and he also got a submission against mccall too so but he is working on the finishing ability which is good to see um but he's also he's got durability and he has cardio too so yeah very good fight don't blame anybody for picking and either guy here but i'm just gonna go with the younger guy who i think is just more well-rounded and i think he's durable enough to win and that's kayo i like his i think he will mix in the grappling he's a very smart fighter out of fighting nerds uh all those guys they have good game plans they they're usually well-rounded as well and they will they will um you know take what their opponent gives them uh on the feet obviously that's where kayo's gonna be um have the most danger if you will so if he can get jared to the mat i think he's gonna pretty much i don't want to say dominate but he'll control jared on the mat and probably win the minutes and the rounds that way on the feet it'll be very close but you're always you know rolling dice with jared because he's, he's got that power and he's got strong kicks like i said to good high kicks as well so give me kyle to win i'm gonna say i'll say decision wouldn't shock me, but I wouldn't, I could see also a submission as well. I don't see a knockout from Kyle. The knockout would probably go to Jared if he lands. So I, I think Jared's pretty much path to victory is to, you know, try to knock out Kyle, but Kyle's pretty durable, man. So Kyle by, I'm going to say decision. I think he gets this one done. He just, he just is going to grapple for the majority of this fight, I believe. But that is it. All 10 fights right now. So like I said, if they do add one more during the week or whatever, I'll go ahead and put that in the comments uh, below telling you who I pick in a little 
little reason why. So thanks everybody for watching yet again, another short video. I like those short ones. Um, be sure to tune in Wednesday night, me and Cody for uh, defend your units. Again, we're going to go over our picks and bets as well. Um, hit the like button for me as well for this one. Leave some comments. Always helps the algorithm and the videos out a ton. So take care. Good luck to everybody this weekend. And until next time, happy fight night.